And in our spiritual eyes, as we look to the glory of the Lord, I believe we can have burnt into our spiritual self an image so that whenever you close your eyes, whenever you go into prayer, it only takes you a little while for you to enter into and see the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus Christ. There's power in sight, so we need to be careful what we look at. We need to change the image of what we're looking at, meditating upon. We need to change the image of what we see in Him. We need to change the image of what we see in ourself. And we need to change what comes out of our mouth, because what comes out of our mouth also paints a picture inside of us. And often we can be wanting to see something, but what's coming out of our mouth is the complete opposite. Now, with healing, we need to see in our mind's eye, we need to see Jesus Christ as our healer. It says in the Old Testament, I am the Lord that healeth you. In Hebrew, that word means I am your medicine. I am your healer. I am your doctor. And I meditate upon that a lot when I'm got symptoms on me, I just say, Jesus Christ is my medicine. And I have communion, and I just thank God. I'm eating his flesh and drinking his blood. I am consuming, as it were, the life of Christ. He's my medicine. He is my doctor. He's my doctor. I go to him first. I'm not saying we shouldn't go to physical, literal doctors, but I go to my doctor first. My number one doctor is Jesus, and I ask him what to do. And he tells me what to do. I actually had a wart on my finger, and it was there for ages. I'd speak to it, and I'd tell it to go, and blah, blah, blah. It went on for ages and ages, and I said, Lord, what do I do about this? And he said, Google it and find out. So I looked it up, and I found out there was cider vinegar on that, some sticking plaster, and some baking soda. Put that on, you know, it disappeared within a week. I could have had that thing off my finger years if I'd listened to the Lord, you know, and Dr. Google. Yeah. So... Often we believe that Jesus is our healer, but we say opposite, the opposite to that. We need to also say what we believe. We need to see the truth in the word and then say it. And I've memorized this. I hope I get it right. But I say that every time you speak your faith, you create a stronger image inside of you. If it's healing and you desire, then the image of healing is perfected by the word of God and your continual confession of it. Eventually, you see yourself well. The image becomes perfected. And I know that's true, that if you keep saying it, looking at it in the Word, eventually the image becomes stronger and stronger, and you see yourself well. Now, no matter what comes against you, you see it in your mind's eye. You see Jesus as your healer. It's eventually perfected by that continual confession. Now, it paints a picture. I, I'm a, an artist by trade, and I know what it is to paint a picture. And I believe that there's a greater talent than painting a literal picture, and that is learning to paint in your mind's eye a picture of Jesus Christ, your healer, of Jesus Christ, your victor, of Jesus Christ, your provider. And you paint that picture, you paint that picture until it becomes more and more real inside of you. If your heart is not changed, then what comes out of your mouth will be different. So you need to change your heart by the word of God. Speak it out and it's like a cycle. You change your heart, you speak it out, it comes back into your heart, you speak it out. And as you keep doing that, that picture becomes clearer and clearer. You know, you may have taken 40 years to get to this place of unbelief in your life, and it's not going to happen overnight for you to get out of it. You need to work on it to start undoing that which has been sown into your life. Now, you might say, well, I don't know how to meditate on the Word. And I would say to you, yes, you do. The other night when you woke up in a cold sweat and spent an hour thinking about all of your problems that were going through your mind over and over and over, and the next day you told them to your wife or your husband, that's meditation. You need to start disciplining yourself to think about the Word of God. God's plans for you are good and not evil. He's got a future for you and a hope. He's not planning evil for you. The devil would like that, but you have a future and a hope. Meditating on that Word, 
forcing yourself, in a sense, to think good things because that is the truth. So we need to do that. Paul said, but we see Jesus. I don't know what the world's looking at, but we as Christians see Jesus, that he is crowned with glory and honor. He's crowned with glory and honor. But we see Jesus crowned with glory and honor. Just start taking that verse and just say it. You might say, well, I don't see Jesus. Well, believe by your confession. Believe that you can start to see Jesus. And I know you can. You start, first of all, by looking at the scriptures and see all the scriptures about the Lord and start meditating on them, start putting them into your mind's eye. I used to have a competition with myself, and I think I shared this with you before. When we were kids, we used to do, I spy with my little eye, something beginning with blah, blah, blah. So I'd sit in a room, and I haven't got my Bible with me, and I think, well, I spy with my little eye, and then the clock would chime, and I'd remember that scripture, now's the time to praise the Lord. Don't you know it's now time to praise the Lord? Then I'd look at a light, and I think Jesus is the light of the world. Then I'd look at a reflection in a mirror. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. I'd look at the room and say, he is with me. He's a spacious and a roomy God. You can just constantly get yourself to think of Scripture and start filling yourself with this picture of Jesus Christ. Having your spiritual eyes opened. Now, we may not literally see Jesus, but we can start painting that picture inside of us by the word of God, having our spiritual eyes opened. And as I said, there's, the Bible is full of words describing him. When I look at the mountain, it says that he uh, looms immense and august above all those that surround him. The mountain we see every day. Jesus is glorious. He's higher than the mountain. If, you compare, if you've climbed Paratutu, it's hard work, isn't it, climbing Paratutu? But when you compare Paratutu to Mount Taranaki, there's no competition. And it's the same with Jesus. He is higher than the highest mountain. Amen. It says that the mountain tops are his and the depths of the earth. And I, I've realized that, that when you're really feeling good, that belongs to God. But even when you're not feeling good at all and you're way down in the pits... That belongs to God too. He can bring you out of that pit. Amen. I like to meditate on the Lord. But one thing I've found that he wants to take you beyond that to start meditating on who you are. And that is incredibly important. You were crucified with Christ. When we have communion, we think of Jesus being crucified. But Paul brings out in his fifth gospel, he brings out the fact that you too were crucified with Christ. And it's important for us to understand that. You were co-crucified with Christ. You were buried with Christ. It's all scriptural. You were raised with Christ. So when Jesus was raised, you were co-raised with him. When he was ascended, you were co-ascended with him. But it doesn't stop there. It says you are co-seated as one with him in heavenly places. Look at Ephesians and Colossians. You are co-seated with Christ in heavenly places as one. That's why when the Lord says all that's been given to Christ is yours, you can understand that when you believe that you were crucified with him, you also believe that you were raised with him and ascended with him. When you see that, you can understand how all that Christ has been given has been given to you, not because you deserve it, but you believe what he says about you. You believe what he says about you. It's Abraham had righteousness accredited to him because he believed. Not because you've done anything that important, but you believe. And believe me, the devil hates you understanding this. He doesn't want you to know all of that truth because it sets you free. I believe the end time church will be a church that understands this. Those people who really know that they can stand against the enemy, not because of anything they've done, but they believe. That they have been raised with Christ and seated with him in heavenly places. So many Christians see themselves as worms. I am nothing. And they think by saying that it's a humble thing to say. But really, that's not the way the Lord wants you to say it. 
He doesn't want you to see it like that. It's not humble. He wants you to see what he did for you at the cross. That is not truth. You are raised with Christ into heavenly places. Now, I'm bringing this to an end now. We need to watch what we look at. I have friends who, when I first started saying this, thinking, oh, he's lost. He's lost his marbles. He's gone all religious. Because I said, I'm not watching the things I used to watch. And not because I'm being religious. It's because I've had a picture of Jesus now. And I don't want anything to mar that picture. I remember when we were at Bible college, I used to love playing Space Invaders. Remember that game called Space Invaders in the day? These little aliens would come down out of the sky, and you'd have to shoot these bullets up there. And before they touched the ground, you'd have to get them all, and I beat it. Okay. The trouble is, when I went to pray, all I could see was little aliens coming down. All the time, constantly. And I thought, well, I've got to make a choice. This is ruining my quiet time. Uh, so I stopped playing Space Invaders because it was affecting me. And when I was watching graphic movies, nowadays the, 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 the graphics in movies are so powerful that when I went to pray, all I could see was a Terminator <laughs> rising up out of the... <laughs> and I thought, no, no, this is not good. This is not good. And so I began to be careful about what I was watching because I don't want that vision of Jesus... To be mad, I want to be able to go into his presence in an instant and see the glory of the Lord in the face of Jesus Christ. It tells us in Proverbs 4.23, Above all else, guard your affections, for they influence everything else in your life. It affects your health. It affects your prosperity. It affects your <coughs> victory, your prosperity, your health. All of those things are affected by your affections, what you are gazing upon. And so as Christians, we need to make a choice. It's not that you're not saved. It's just what sort of relationship do you want to have with the Lord? There's a scripture that tells us that it says here, Yes, dear friends, we are already God's children right now. We can't even imagine what it's going to be like later on, but we do know this. That when he comes, we will be like him as a result of seeing him as he really is. That principle of one day us absolutely being perfected when we see Jesus, I believe still applies today according to 2 Corinthians 3.18, that you're changed from one level of glory to another. As you behold the Lord now, seeing him crowned with glory and honor, seeing him as your healer, seeing him as your victor, you are changed as a result of seeing him as that. So we just need to realize it's so important to be looking at the right things. We waste hours and hours and hours looking at rubbish when we could be beholding the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, you may think that's being a bit religious, but time is running out for many of us. We've got more time behind us than we have ahead of us, but by the grace of God. So we, 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 it says redeem the time for the days are evil. Buy up that time. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So let's finish well. Amen? Amen. I've seen some men of God haven't finished well, and I'm worried about them not finishing well because they've sort of, ah, oh, I've had a good innings. Let's just eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow I die, you know, basically. But we mustn't be like that. Let's finish well. Amen.